In this lesson, we are going to discuss double replacement or metathesis reactions. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to define double replacement or metathesis reactions and predict the reactants or products of double replacement reactions. Double replacement reactions involve two compounds that exchange atoms or ions to form two different compounds. Let's say we have a substance AB reacting with substance CD. In substance AB, A is the cation and B is the anion. In substance CD, C is the cation and D is the anion. In double replacement reactions, the ions will form bonds with the opposite ion of the other compound. In this case, ion A will bond with ion D and ion C will pair with ion B. This double replacement reaction will lead to the formation of compounds AD and CD. In compound AD, A is still the cation and D is still the anion. In compound CD, C is still the cation and B is still the anion. This type of reaction is the driving mechanism of precipitation reactions. Precipitation reactions occur when two aqueous compounds react to form two different compounds one aqueous compound, and one solid compound which is called a precipitate. To determine which product of a double replacement reaction will exist as a precipitate, solubility rules will be followed. Shown here is the table indicating the states of compounds formed by double replacement reactions. Those with AQ are aqueous or soluble. These are the compounds of the 1A metals, nitrates, most chlorides except with silver, lead, and mercury, and most sulfates except with calcium, strontium, barium, and lead. Those with S are solid or insoluble. These include oxides, hydroxides, carbonates, and phosphates, except for those of the 1A metals. These also include sulfides except those of 1A and 2A elements. Let us now discuss how to predict the products and states of the double replacement reactions, particularly for precipitation reactions. For the first example, we have the reaction between silver nitrate and hydrochloric acid. The first step in determining the products of double replacement reactions is to determine the signs of the ions involved in the compounds. For silver nitrate, silver is the positive ion, and nitrate is the negative ion. For hydrochloric acid, hydrogen is the positive ion, and chloride is the negative ion. The second step is to pair each sign to its opposite sign from the other compound. Silver, having a positive sign, will be paired with a chloride ion, forming silver chloride. On the other hand, hydrogen of hydrochloric acid will be paired with the nitrate ion to form nitric acid. The next step is to identify which between silver chloride and nitric acid will be the precipitate. However, Acids and bases usually exist in aqueous form as products of chemical reactions. Let's look at our solubility table to determine if silver chloride will form a solid. In silver chloride, silver is the cation and chloride is the anion. The intersection of these ions show that it will form a solid. Therefore, we write S as a subscript of silver chloride and AQ as a subscript of nitric acid. Since the equation is already balanced, our complete reaction is 1 mole of silver nitrate reacts with 1 mole of hydrochloric acid to form 1 mole of silver chloride and 1 mole of nitric acid. For the second example, we have the reaction between sodium sulfate and lead to nitrate. Let us identify the signs of the ions involved in the reaction. For sodium sulfate, sodium has a charge of positive 1 and sulfate has a charge of negative 2. For lead to nitrate, lead has a charge of positive 2, and nitrate has a charge of negative 1. To predict the products of this reaction, sodium will bond with nitrate since their charges have different signs. Doing a crisscross of their charges, we have sodium nitrate. On the other hand, lead will bond with the sulfate ion to form lead to sulfate. Another method in determining the products is to combine the names of the ions and from there, write the formula for the compounds. We're now going to determine which between the two compounds will exist as a precipitate. For sodium nitrate, we have the sodium cation and the nitrate cation. The intersection of these ions indicate that it is soluble or aqueous. 
on the other hand, for lead to nitrate, we have lead to cation and the sulfate anion. The intersection of these ions indicate that it is insoluble or solid. Therefore, write the symbol for Aquarius as a subscript of sodium nitrate, and the symbol for solid as a subscript of lead 2 nitrate. To balance the reaction, we have 2 as a coefficient of sodium nitrate. This means that 1 mole of Aquarius sodium sulfate reacts with 1 mole of lead 2 nitrate to form 2 moles of Aquarius sodium nitrate and 1 mole of lead 2 sulfate. For the last example, we have the reaction between aluminum sulfate and barium chloride. For aluminum sulfate, aluminum has a positive charge of 3, and sulfate has a charge of negative 2. On the other hand, for barium chloride, barium has a charge of positive 2, and chloride has a charge of negative 1. Our rule is a positive ion pairs with a negative ion of the other compound. Therefore, aluminum pairs with chloride to form aluminum chloride. Doing a crisscross of charges, its formula will be AlCl3. Barium will bond with sulfate to form barium sulfate. Doing a crisscross of their charges, it will be simplified as BaSO4. Now, let's determine which between the two products will be the precipitate. For aluminum chloride, aluminum paired with chloride to form an aqueous product. For barium sulfate, Barium paired with sulfate to form a solid product, thus the precipitate of this reaction. So we denote aluminum chloride as aqueous product and barium sulfate as the solid product. For the complete balance reaction, 1 mole of aluminum sulfate reacts with 3 moles of barium chloride to form 2 moles of aluminum chloride and 3 moles of barium sulfate. Another double replacement reaction involves neutralizing reactants. We have here the reaction between Hb plus COH, Hb being the acid, and COH being the base. Neutralization reactions have these two substances as the reactants. Hydrogen is the acid's cation, and ion B is the acid's anion. Ion B may be a monoatomic anion or a polyatomic anion. For the base, C is the cation. This may be a type 1 or type 2 metal or any polyatomic cation. And lastly, the hydroxide ion is then ion. Ion C of the base will bond with ion B of the acid to form a salt product. This salt may either be aqueous or solid depending on the solubility rules. This salt which is comprised of equal weights of acid and base is an indication that the solution is neutralized. On the other hand, the hydrogen ion of the acid bands with the hydroxide ion of the base to form water. Let us look at some examples of neutralization reactions. For the first example, let us look at the neutralization reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. We need to identify the ions first to determine which ions will pair up. For the acid, hydrogen is the positive ion and chloride is the negative ion. For the base, Sodium ion is the positive ion, and hydroxide ion is the negative ion. Hydrogen will bond with the hydroxide ion to form water. Sodium, on the other hand, will bond with the chloride ion to form sodium chloride. Let us now determine if sodium chloride will be aqueous or solid. Since sodium and chloride ions are involved, the compound is aqueous. Therefore, the complete reaction is 1 mole of hydrochloric acid reacts with 1 mole of sodium hydroxide to form 1 mole of water and 1 mole of sodium chloride. For the last example, we have the reaction between phosphoric acid and calcium hydroxide. In phosphoric acid, hydrogen is the positive ion and phosphate is the negative ion with a charge of negative 3. For the base, Calcium is the positive ion with a charge of positive 2, and hydroxide having a charge of negative 1 is the anion. Hydrogen and hydroxide ions will be pairing to form water. On the other hand, calcium will bond with phosphate to form calcium phosphate. There will be a crisscross of charges, therefore, the charges positive 2 and negative 3 of calcium and phosphate respectively will be the subscript of the opposite ion. 
Let us now determine if calcium phosphate will be a precipitate or aqueous. The ions forming calcium phosphate are the calcium cation and the phosphate anion. The compound formed by this ion is a solid. Thus, there is a precipitate in this reaction. Balancing the chemical reaction, we have 2 moles of aqueous phosphoric acid reacting with 3 moles of aqueous calcium hydroxide to form 6 moles of water and 1 mole of solid calcium phosphate. This example is a proof that neutralization reactions may also result to precipitate formation. In this lesson, we discuss double replacement reactions. Specifically, we discuss the following concepts. Double replacement or metathesis reactions involve ion exchange between two ionic compounds. Precipitate reactions involve two aqueous ionic compounds that produce aqueous and solid products. And lastly, neutralization reactions involve reactions between an acid and a base. These form water and an aqueous or solid salt. And this ends our discussion on double replacement or metathesis reactions.